You're listening to the Sunday Lesson Sermon provided by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, Plainfield, New Jersey, the United States of America. Subject, Adam and Fallen Man. Golden Text, Isaiah. Cease ye from man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Responsive reading is from Galatians, Isaiah, and 1 Corinthians. Who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Wherefore then serveth the law? For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The Bible Genesis God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. And God looked upon the earth, And behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Romans For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, The law entered, that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? God forbid! For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. 1 John Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that 
when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Let no man deceive you. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. John Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, Ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar, and the father of it. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Galatians. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. 1 Corinthians And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. 2 Corinthians Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. 
but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. But we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. I will now read correlative passages from the Christian Science Textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The great truth in the science of being, that the real man was, is, and ever shall be perfect, is incontrovertible. For if man is the image, reflection of God, he is neither inverted nor subverted, but upright and godlike. The verity that God's image is not a creator, though he reflects the creation of mind, God, constitutes the underlying reality of reflection. Few persons comprehend what Christian science means by the word reflection. To himself, mortal and material man seems to be substance. But his sense of substance involves error, and therefore is material, temporal. On the other hand, the immortal spiritual man is really substantial and reflects the eternal substance, or spirit, which mortals hope for. He reflects the divine, which constitutes the only real and eternal entity. Anybody who is able to perceive the incongruity between God's idea and poor humanity ought to be able to discern the distinction made by Christian science between God's man made in his image and the sinning race of Adam. The word Adam is from the Hebrew Adama, signifying the red color of the ground, dust, nothingness. Divide the name Adam into two syllables, and it reads, a dam, or obstruction. Here, a dam is not a mere play upon words. It stands for obstruction, error, even the supposed separation of man from God, and the obstacle which the serpent, sin, would impose between man and his creator. Spiritually followed, the book of Genesis is the history of the untrue image of God, named a sinful mortal. This deflection of being, rightly viewed, serves to suggest the proper reflection of God and the spiritual actuality of man, as given in the first chapter of Genesis. Even thus, the crude forms of human thought take on higher symbols and significations when scientifically Christian views of the universe appear, illuminating time with the glory of eternity. This second record unmistakably gives the history of error in its externalized forms, 
called Life and Intelligence in Matter. It records pantheism, opposed to the supremacy of divine spirit. But this state of things is declared to be temporary, and this man to be mortal, dust returning to dust. God's glowing denunciations of man when not found in his image, the likeness of spirit, convince reason and coincide with revelation in declaring this material creation false. Because of its false basis, the mist of obscurity evolved by error deepens the false claim and finally declares that God knows error and that error can improve his creation. This false sense of existence is fratricidal. In the words of Jesus, it, evil, devil, is a murderer from the beginning. Error begins by reckoning life as separate from spirit, thus sapping the foundations of immortality as if life and immortality were something which matter can both give and take away. What can be the standard of good, of spirit, of life, or of truth, if they produce their opposites, such as evil, matter, error, and death? God could never impart an element of evil, and man possesses nothing which he has not derived from God. How, then, has man a basis for wrongdoing? Whence does he obtain the propensity or power to do evil? Has spirit resigned to matter the government of the universe? If mankind would relinquish the belief that God makes sickness, sin, and death, or makes man capable of suffering on account of this malevolent triad, the foundations of error would be sapped, and error's destruction ensured. But if we theoretically endow mortals with the creativeness and authority of deity, how dare we attempt to destroy what he hath made, or even to deny that God made man evil and made evil good? Jesus strips all disguise from error when his teachings are fully understood. By parable and argument, he explains the impossibility of good producing evil. And he also scientifically demonstrates this great fact, proving by what are wrongfully called miracles that sin, sickness, and death are beliefs, elusive errors, which he could and did destroy. Whatever indicates the fall of man, or the opposite of God, or God's absence, is the Adam dream, which is neither mind nor man, for it is not begotten of the Father. The rule of inversion infers from error its opposite, truth. But truth is the light which dispels error. As mortals begin to understand spirit, they give up the belief that there is any true existence apart from God. It is difficult for the sinner to accept divine science because science exposes his nothingness. But the sooner error is reduced to its native nothingness, the sooner man's great reality will appear, 
and his genuine being will be understood. The destruction of error is by no means the destruction of truth or life, but is the acknowledgement of them. Let us remember that harmonious and immortal man has existed forever and is always beyond and above the mortal illusion of any life, substance, and intelligence as existent in matter. Truth has but one reply to all error, to sin, sickness, and death. Dust, nothingness, thou art, and unto dust, nothingness, shalt thou return. As in Adam, error, all die, even so in Christ, truth, shall all be made alive. The mortality of man is a myth, for man is immortal. Man is, and forever has been, God's reflection. I will now read the three daily duties from the church manual provided by Mary Baker Eddy. Daily Prayer It shall be the duty of every member of this church to pray each day, Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life, and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affections of all mankind and govern them. A rule for motives and acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin, in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. Alertness to Duty It shall be the duty of every member of this church to defend himself daily against aggressive mental suggestion, and not be made to forget nor to neglect his duty to God, to his leader, and to mankind. By his works he shall be judged, and justified or condemned. This Bible lesson is prepared by the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. It is comprised of scriptural quotations from the King James Bible and correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. For more information, please visit our website, plainfieldcs.com. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day.